Ever wondered what makes a car overpowered? Is it just about horsepower or is there more to the story? Well, get ready to uncover the secrets because in this video, we're diving into the world of power cars. It's not just about sheer muscle. It's about finding the sweet spot between power and practicality. These cars are undeniably powerful, but how do they stack up against each other? Watch the video till the end to find out. The Ferrari 812. Let's start by looking at Ferrari's history, from its elegant 166 to the fiery 812 super fast. Now, these Ferraris were all about style and power, like mixing peanut butter with jelly, a perfect combo. But then, in 2012, things took a wild turn when they unleashed the beastly F12, packing a whopping 730 horsepower under the hood. Suddenly, even the guy who shouts power for breakfast was like, hmm, maybe tone it down a notch? But did Ferrari listen? Nope. They went full throttle with the 812 Superfast because you know why settle for 730 horsepower when you can have 789. It's like drinking beer with 80% alcohol. You gotta handle it with care. While the old GTs were all about cruising and comfort, the Superfast is more like being locked in a room with a bear. Intense and exhilarating. And let's talk design. This thing has more cuts and edges than Edward Scissorhands. Seriously, it's like they let a ninja loose with a crayon. Besides all the horsepower madness, who doesn't love a little Italian flair? The Aston Martin Vantage V550. Now we're diving into the wild world of Aston Martin's transformation from classy grand tours to full-on muscle machines. The epitome of sophistication suddenly decides it's time to unleash their inner beast, and that's when things get interesting. First up, we've got the DBS, the AMV8, and the granddaddy of them all, the Vantage V550. Now, why V550, you wonder? Well, that's the number of stallions they crammed under the hood back in 92. It's like they were playing a game of horsepower bingo and decided to go all in. Now, how did they manage to squeeze out all that power? Easy. They went full Hulk mode and slapped not one, but two massive superchargers under the hood. To handle all that grunt, they beefed up the suspension. Why? Because those rear tires were craving a bit too much attention, getting cozy with the wheel arches every time you hit the gas. And the brakes? They were bigger than a Thanksgiving turkey. I mean, they had to be, considering this lousy boy weighed as much as a small elephant. But the V550 was too heavy to break any speed records or hit the 322 kilometers per hour mark. Sure, it looked impressive, but graceful? Not so much. So in the end, Aston Martin could have toned down the power a tad. I mean, less horsepower means fewer skid marks on the road, right? But you gotta admire their enthusiasm for going big or going home, even if it means leaving a trail of burnt rubber behind. The 2006 Impala SS. Now, if you're wondering why the latest Impala never got its own SS version, blame it on this guy. This car kind of ruined it for everyone. Shame on you, Impala SS. So what's the big issue? Well, besides looking like it drove straight out of a video game as an NPC car, it had a major case of too much. The people at GM thought, hey, let's bring back that old muscle car vibe, and decided to shoehorn a massive 5.3 liter LS4 V8 engine under the hood. Sounds cool, right? Well, here's the twist. It's a front wheel drive. Yep, you heard that right. A V8 powering the front wheels. Now, because the engine could only fit in there one way, the poor Impala ended up with a wonky drivetrain, with one drive shaft longer than the other. Talk about being lopsided. This led to the infamous torque steer, where the car decides it wants to go one way while you're desperately trying to keep it on the road. And guess what? This beast packed a whopping 300 horsepower. Instead of going straight, you're wrestling with it like a bull in a china shop. However, other car manufacturers have found ways to deal with this issue. 
Honda tweaked their suspension, and Pontiac's Grand Prix GXP got some serious upgrades. But Chevy? Nope. They just dumped a big old V8 in there and called it a day. Let's find something nice to say about it, shall we? Well, it sounded pretty good. Who doesn't love the roar of a V8 engine, even if it's causing chaos on the road? The Mercedes CLK DTM. Let's talk about the Mercedes CLK DTM, a car that's like the rock star of the road. It's bold, it's badass, and it stands out in a crowd. Back in the day, AMG cars were known for being tire shredding beasts, but the CLK DTM, oh, it took things to a whole new level. In a lineup of sleek speedsters, the CLK DTM was the one with the biggest grin and the muscles to match. With its wide body and enough carbon fiber to make a superhero jealous, this machine meant business. Under its hood wasn't your average engine. Nope. It borrowed its power from the legendary Mercedes McLaren SLR, a supercar that turned heads wherever it went. Now you'd think having a little brother keeping up with the big boss would cause some tension, right? Well, the people at Mercedes had a clever solution. They put a speed limit on the DTM, capping its top speed at an incredible 320 kilometers per hour. Why? Because any faster, and those tires would go up in smoke. And to make sure the SLR kept its crown, they even gave the DTM a smaller supercharger, dialing down the power and the speed. Talk about sibling rivalry with a twist. So, which would you choose? The Superstar SLR or the Underdog DTM? Comment down your choice. The Nissan Skyline R34 GTR. Let's take a trip back to the 80s in Japan, where the streets were flooded with sports cars faster than a sushi chef chopping tuna. Joke aside, with all this horsepower madness, the Japanese government wasn't too pleased. So what did they do? They pulled a classic move and said, hey, no car can have more than 276 horsepower. Now, you'd think this would level the playing field, right? Wrong. It was like telling many kids they can't have candy. They just wanted it more. So, while they all agreed to play nice, some cars were stretching the truth. Like the Mitsubishi GTO, which mysteriously had the same specs as its American twin, but magically capped at 276 horsepower in Japan. Sneaky, right? And don't even get me started on the Supra. It's like they were playing a game of hide and seek with horsepower numbers. But the real MVP, or should I say, the real cheat code, was the Skyline GTR. Locked to 276 horsepower officially, but behind closed doors, it was flexing a solid 300 on the wheels. That's like saying you're on a diet while sneaking cookies in the pantry. But why did everyone think the GTR was the king of the hill? Sure, the computerized all-wheel drive system was cool, but let's be real. Having more horses under the hood than anyone else was the real secret sauce. The Rimac Nevera. Let's put on our serious faces for a sec and talk about horsepower limits for cars. With the way things are going, it's like we're on a highway to horsepower hell. Take the Rimac Nevera, for example, an all-wheel drive electric beast with a mind-blowing 1917 metric horsepower under the hood. Or should I say, 2,000 in real life speak. That's that you're over 100 kilometers per hour in 1.74 seconds. And just 2.3 seconds later, you're cruising at 193 kilometers per hour. Talk about a roller coaster ride on steroids. But here's the kicker. This Hyper EV is just the tip of the horsepower iceberg. With technology evolving fast, who knows what the next beast will bring? Will we be handing out rocket ship keys to anyone with two million bucks and a dream? But the government is starting to tap the brakes on this horsepower madness. After a fatal incident down under, Australia is introducing special licenses for ultra high performance rides. Think of anything with over 273 horsepower per metric ton. Yep, you'll need a special course just to take these babies for a spin. The TVR Cerbera Speed 12. When McLaren F1 was stealing the spotlight, TVR's boss, Peter Wheeler, got a bit miffed and said, hey, we can do better. So they unleashed the Speed 12, the meanest machine on four wheels. This beast had a massive 7.7 .7 liter V12 engine that was so powerful, even the dyno went boom. 
They tried measuring its horsepower, but it was like trying to count the stars in the sky. Impossible. And get this, it weighed as much as a feather and had zero safety gadgets. Yup, there is no safety net here, just pure adrenaline. So, they scrapped most of them except for one, the slightly tamer version with just 827 horsepower. Ah, much safer, right? So there you have it, the Speed 12, the car that's wilder than a rodeo bull on a caffeine rush. Which car do you admire the most? Let us know in the comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching.